Thanks very much, Francis. Um, the second commended poem is by Noel Connor, and it's called Meeting Max Wall at the Whitworth. Um, we like the wit of this poem. It relates to the writer viewing a painting in our collection by Maggie Hambling called Max as God owes Vladimir. Seeing the painting sparks in the writer a memory. Um, it doesn't really matter whether it's a real or creatively invented one, but it's a memory of an encounter he had with Max Wall at a petrol station in South London some 40 years ago. Max Wall was driving a classic Merc. The writer was the petrol station cashier. The poem moves between memory of the meeting and the writer viewing the painting in the gallery and thinking about Max and his role as Vladimir in Beckett's play. The final stanza sums up the comic appeal of the poem. I won't read it now because uh, Noel's going to read it later. But poignantly, rereading re the poem, um, and because obviously Max Wall's no longer with us, um, the poem also sparked for me a memory of a meeting with Maggie Hambling just after her father had died. And she'd been painting a sequence of exquisite but really anguished small paintings of her, of her father's head on the hospital pillow as he drifted gradually out of life. So if Noel's here, there we go. Congratulations. Okay. I mean, very briefly, you, you described the painting and the, the situation very, very well. It is a true story. It actually did happen. I did meet Max Wall when I was 17. Uh, I left school in Belfast when I was 17, let's say prematurely. And I found myself doing a series of jobs in factories in London, and I ended up working in a petrol station in Peckham. And there was no self-service then. You had to serve everyone who came into the garage. And uh, one, one very quiet evening, this beautiful old classic Merc rolled into the, the garage, and this very extraordinary distinguished man got out of the car. And I knew he was famous. I recognized him, but I, I didn't know who he was. And uh, this, the poem is about the interaction between Max and myself that evening. And uh, as has been said, he was a man from a different era. He was from the old music halls, the variety halls, and he was famous for wearing his black tights, and he had a clown's haircut. And he became famous in, in later life. He reinvented himself as someone acting in Samuel Beckett plays, uh, particularly Vladimir and Wade of Magotto, and Maggie Hamling's painting depicts him as that. So it, it was genuinely thrilling quite a few years ago when I came into this gallery and saw the painting on the wall and recognized the man from the incident when I was 17. So uh, it feels like a personal magical circle has been completed reading this poem to you today, so thank you for that. Meeting Max Wall at the Whitworth. It's good to see you again, half a lifetime later. You wouldn't remember me. We shared a stage of sorts, an awkward two-hander, South London, the spring of 73. We hardly spoke, a line a piece of I recall correctly, on a floodlit forecourt along the Queen's Road, Peckham. The gangly lad who served you petrol, that was me. Just you and I, leaning either end of your classic murk, a black coupe distinctive as you, both belonging to another age. Dumbstruck, I racked my brain to remember who you were, pulling clueless faces by the pump, my free hand pointing, half pleading, finger tapping my forehead to dislodge some scrap of memory. Amused by my performance, prancing and gurning to confuse me more, you mimed my gawky gestures back at me. Beneath the unforgiving spotlights for all the passing cars to see, two mimics in a strange and silent double act. Now face to face again, I watch you hold this gallery to attention. Your portrait posed as ragged Vladimir, 
wind whipped in a maelstrom of paint, joyless joker, befuddled in brush strokes, this comedy of life and death swirling around your wordless head. World weary clown, that evening when you slid the window down to pay, I leaned in and shyly mumbled, Mister, you're famous. Old stager, true pro, you took your time, drolled the answer like a Beckett punchline, son, I'm infamous. <laughs> 